So who are we? Firstly, for those of you who are new to us, and um, this is your first time attending today, Cure Parkinson's is a medical research charity. We were founded in 2005, so um, this year represents 20 years of activities. And the um, charity was set up by four gentlemen diagnosed with Parkinson's who didn't want better care, they wanted a cure. They wanted to get on with their lives and um, they were frustrated by the lack of research focused on actually curing the condition. So they set up the charity with the aim of identifying and funding and facilitating research focused on slowing, stopping or reversing Parkinson's for people currently living with the condition. And how do we fund research? We do it through this wonderful group of people. There's 20 of them. And they are volunteers. They meet four times a year. And they review, independent of the charity, they review uh, applications that are sent to us for research funding. We fund both preclinically, but the preclinical research must be within five years of the clinic. And then we fund clinical trials as well. And I should just say that. Um, Professor Ruth Dobson is the chair of the committee, and she's recently taken over from um, Alistair Coles, who stepped down last year after his term. And we're very privileged and pleased to have uh, Ruth on board. Our application process is very simple. They will receive applications and review them, and if they think that, firstly, it's within remit, that is, it's within five years of the clinic, if it's preclinical research, or if it's of a disease-modifying nature, um, if it's clinical research, then they will send it out for peer review. Um, there will be a three-month gap between meetings, but at the second meeting, they will reevaluate the grant with the peer review, with the expert peer review feedback comments, and then they will make a recommendation to the trustees as to whether to fund or not. So it's about a three to four-month process. Now, in addition to that committee, we have a second committee, and that second committee is the International Link Clinical Trials um, Committee. This is an initiative that was set up 13 years ago with the goal of accelerating the clinical testing of new um, therapies for Parkinson's, specifically disease-modifying therapies. Uh, so it's a committee of 25 leading experts from around the world, all very much focused on Parkinson's. And they meet every year for a two-day face-to-face meeting. This was a photo from the 2024 meeting in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And we, we provide them with a set of dossiers typically 15 to 20 dossiers a year, and each dossier is um, everything that we know about a particular treatment or molecule, and with a rationale and an explanation as to what we're proposing. And their job is to rank and prioritize which of those should go forward for clinical testing. And the committee is chaired, I don't have a pointer here, but the two folks in the middle, um, there's um, Camille Carroll with the pink shirt, she is the co-chair, and then beside her with the blue shirt is um, Professor David Simon. But uh, this is a who's who of um, the world's best Parkinson's researchers, and we're very, very fortunate to have them on board um, helping with this initiative. Um, and the impact of the ILCT program over the 13 years has been very impressive. We have 20, um, 21 completed um, studies associated with the program and 20 ongoing trials. About 71% of Cure Parkinson's funding has been awarded to projects investigating um, ILCT molecules. And um, the external funding supporting um, the program is um, upwards of over 80 million. And currently, the um, Van Andel Institute, who is our funding partner in the um, program, uh, they, are, they and ourselves are supporting 10 trials at present through, that, through this partnership. But over 5,000 people have been with Parkinson's have been um, involved in an ILCT-associated um, clinical trial. So it's been, a, it's been a remarkable initiative. And this is what the program looked like um, halfway through last year. But um, I'm, I'm using the older slide simply because um, I'm going to be using this schematic to um, help uh, orient us through this afternoon. So today we're going to be, um, well, I'm going to briefly be discussing the results of a couple of clinical trials. We've had the um, well, these are, the, these are clinical trials that are about to be announced, excuse me, this year. And then we also have clinical trials that will be starting um, this year as well. So these are all things to look out for over the next uh, 12 months. So looking ahead, um, the NOPARC study, which has been conducted in um, Bergen in Norway, 
Uh, this is a phase three clinical trial of 400 people with Parkinson's. They've been treated for 12 months with either nicotinamide riboside, which is a molecule that targets the mitochondria in cells, um, or placebo. And those results should be uh, made available uh, towards the second half of this year, or the end of this year. So that's one study that we're going to be looking out for the results of. We're also going to be looking out for the results of the Stockholm Exenatide study. Last year we had the phase three results announced um, for Exenatide. It, it was a tale of two trials last year. We had Lixazenatide, which gave us a positive result, and the phase three clinical trial of Exenatide, which gave us a negative result. And both of these drugs belong to a class of diabetes agents called GLP-1 agonists. Uh, and so once we have the Stockholm results, this is a study of 60 participants treated for 18 months um, at a, in a phase two study with a lot of brain imaging uh, associated with it. Once we have these results, we'll call together all of the investigators that have been involved with the conducting of um, GLP-1 agonist clinical trials. And we'll review the data and uh, look at what next steps should be taken with regards to this class of drugs for Parkinson's. Because we've had some encouraging results, so there must be something to be worked on there. And um, we'll keep you updated as to what the outcome of that meeting is. Um, then we have the azathioprine study. Azathioprine is a, an immunosuppressant medication that's used for people with um, inflammatory conditions such as uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, Dr. Caroline Williams-Gray here uh, from Cambridge University, just up the road, is uh, ha or has been conducting a study called AZA-PD, or Azathioprine Parkinson's, and it's involved 60 participants who were treated for 12 months with um, this drug or the placebo, and then there was a six-month follow-up period as well. The results of this uh, trial are about to be announced um, at a um, conference, scientific conference next month, uh, and she's already shared the results with the um, participants. Um, so we should have more news with regards to the results of that very, very shortly. Um, and leveraging the resources that she's put in place now, um, Dr. Williams-Gray is conducting a second um, clinical trial focused on an anti-inflammatory approach. And this is a more targeted uh, molecule. Azathioprine is kind of a sledgehammer approach just to dampening down the entire immune system. Now she's zeroing in on a particular part of the immune system called um, the NLRP3 inflammasome. This is a amplifier. Once the, when, when there is an, uh, an infection or damage in the body, the NLRP3 inf inflammasome amplifies the signal, letting the immune system know that something's wrong. And people with Parkinson's have elevated levels of NLRP3 protein. And so what um, Caroline Williams-Gray and her team are doing in collaboration with a co biotech company called Olatech is conducting a study looking at a drug called Dapansutrol in 36 participants. Dapansutrol is an NR NLRP3 inhibitor, so it dampens down, it reduces and it blocks the activity of this protein NLRP3. And they'll be following these um, 36 individuals for 12 months. It's a phase 2A study, so for the first six months of the trial, uh, the participants will either be on dapansutrol or on placebo. And then for the second six months, everybody in the study will be on dapansutrol. Uh, and that study will be um, hopefully recruiting uh, very shortly. Um, and in addition to this, we have some large projects that are going to be kicking off this year. We're going to be learning about the ASPRO um, phase three study for Ambroxol. But we also have the EJS, or Edmund J. Safra, Accelerating Clinical Trials for um, Parkinson's uh, platform, which is a multi-arm, multi-stage clinical trial platform that's going to be set up across the UK. Multi-arm, multi-stage is an innovative new approach for Parkinson's where you will have a single placebo arm um, being compared with multiple treatment arms. And rather than having a phase 2A study start and then finish, and then we analyse the results, we're going to be analysing the results as we go along by an independent data analysis team, and they will be able to determine if a treatment is working or not over time. And so there'll be a seamless transition from one um, stage, this is where the multi-stage component comes in, into a different stage of clinical testing. You'll go from phase one to phase um, two, phase three, et cetera, all the way through to regulatory approval. That's the plan, at least. 
And so in the schematic you see here, you can see that treatment uh, number one is giving a positive result, and so it's continuing all the way through. Whereas treatment two and treatment three, they've determined is not having any effects, so let's get rid of it, and let's throw in treatment four and treatment five. Over time, it's found that treatment four and treatment five are not having an effect, so then we throw in treatment six and treatment seven. So it's a continuous conveyor belt of testing new drugs, as opposed to stop, start, um, the, way, the method that we use at present, this will just be hopefully accelerating the development of new therapies for modifying disease. And each time a successful molecule um, reaches the regulatory point, that will become standard of care for everybody on the platform. And so increasingly, we get improvements, and it, we get iterative improvements over time. And XPD is not the only platform that's um, attempting this in Parkinson's. Internationally, we have multiple MAMS platforms being set up. We have the XPD um, program here in the UK. We have Hydra um, being set up in Norway. The French team, or NS Park, are setting up a phase two um, multi-arm, multi-stage um, study. There's also the Australian Parkinson's mission, which has ongoing clinical um, studies um, in a MAMS platform, in a MAMS format. And then we have an interesting program called Slepnia, which is, uh, Slepnia comes from the name of the god Odin's horse. Odin's horse apparently had eight legs, and it was the fastest horse. I won't bore you with the details, but that was where the Slepnia name comes from. It's a bit of a tongue twister, and we weren't sure about it, but um, it works. Uh, but the, pro the, the idea with Slepnia is that they are rapidly testing drugs and getting them ready. They're de-risking them to go onto the Hydra and the ActPD and the French um, MAMS platforms. So there might be a drug that's of interest, but we don't know if it accesses the brain, or there might be a drug of interest, and we don't know whether it's hitting its target, intended target. So Slepnia will rapidly test these drugs, de-risk them, and have them ready for prime time MAMS platforms. Uh, and this is a very necessary project in order to supply these larger platforms with a ready, ready supply of drugs um, for clinical testing. The most ambitious of the MAMS platforms, however, is probably the one that's being set up in the US at the moment. So the Michael J. Fox Foundation is setting up the um, Pathway to Prevention trial. And this is going to involve treating um, well, clinically testing drugs in people that are yet to be diagnosed with Parkinson's. So this is what they call the prodromal stage of Parkinson's, where you're starting to demonstrate some of the risk factors associated with Parkinson's. And they're going to be testing drugs in these people, trying to prevent them from ever, ever going on to being diagnosed with Parkinson's. Um, so it's very interesting and uh, exciting times for Parkinson's research and that these large uh, resources are being set up. And um, hopefully, uh, there'll be a lot of cooperation between these platforms. Secure Parkinson's has recently had a workshop where we've invited all the teams involved in these platforms, and there was a lot of collaboration, a lot of talking um, between them, and the idea is for everybody to use similar standards so we can have comparative analyses um, across platforms over time to see what works and what doesn't work, and for everybody to learn from each other's experiences. Um, so that's all I'm going to say, and what I'm going to do now is um, hand on to um, Professor Anthony Shapiro, who will say a few brief words about the ASPRO um, PD study before Marco and Mairead uh, take over. So um, without further ado, um, Professor Shapiro, the stage is all yours. Thank you very much, folks.